Hi, my friends. Um, I miss you guys so much. I hope you're staying healthy and being safe. I am here with you because I'm going to read a book called Hair Apocalypse with You by Jeff Herbatch. So while I'm reading, I want you guys to think about how the illustrations help you to understand what's going on in the book. I also want you to think about what the main character's problem is in the story. Who is the main character? All right. Hair Apocalypse, written by Jeff Herbatch, illustrated by Stephen Gilpin. Aiden Allen was a grubby kid. His clothes were always wrinkled, his shoes were always untied, and he always seemed to have grass stains on his knees. But none of that was the problem. The real problem was that Aiden Allen's hair was completely out of control. It wasn't just messy, it seemed to have a mind of its own. Lie down, hair. Why can't you behave? His hair seemed to move. His hair seemed to shrug. That's not possible, Aiden thought. Aiden reached into the drawer and pulled out his mom's big blue hairbrush. But when he brushed, the bristles immediately became tangled in his greasy locks. His hair seemed to be grabbing the brush. His hair spun the brush in a circle and then flung the brush into the toilet. This is not good. I want you guys to think about how the illustrations help you to better understand what's going on in the story. At the breakfast table, Dad looked up from his phone and shook his head in dismay. Aiden, your hair is crazy. You have to do something. I already tried, Aiden said. Better try again, Dad said. Just then, the school bus honked its horn in front of Aiden's house. There's just no time, Aiden said, as his hair grabbed his spoon and dumped his cereal on the floor. On the bus, Aiden's hair tied itself into three bows. Aiden knew everyone was staring at him. He tried to pretend nothing was happening. But at school... Conley Benton spotted Aiden and his crazy hair right away. It had formed airplane wings on the sides of Aiden's head. There's no way Connolly would stay silent. Look at Aiden Allen's hair, she shouted. Stop doing this, hair! But from the first bell on, his crazy hair did anything but stop. During art class, Aiden's hair grabbed some paintbrushes and splattered paint everywhere. Knock it off, hair. At lunch, Aiden's hair formed a giant dangerous raptor that blew over Noah Foster's milk right onto his pants. Stupid, stupid hair. At recess, Aiden's hair turned into an octopus-like creature. It wrapped around Connolly Benton and her friends and yanked them into a nearby mud puddle. You're the worst hair in the world! After recess, Aiden felt defeated, and his hair was worse than ever. Telling his hair what to do was not working. Yelling at his hair wasn't working either. He took a big breath and talked to his hair. Why are you doing this? What do you want? As the reader, what can you infer that Aiden is realizing right now? Immediately, his hair formed into a magnificent mass of curls. Then it formed into a long ponytail blowing in some imagined wind. Then it rose up into a great shiny mohawk. Then it fell into a flowing mullet. So you want to be styled? No way. There has to be another way to make you happy, Aiden said. For a moment, there was silence. Then, a bit of air moved through his hair. On the bus ride home, Aiden and his hair discussed a plan to fix their issue. Aiden was exhausted. Clearly, his hair was exhausted too. It lay lifeless and flat looking even worse than usual. That night, Aiden took a shower before his dad asked him to. He sang a song and sudsed up. Aiden and his hair had come to an agreement. 
Aiden would wash every weekday, but weekends were his days to be totally grubby. At the breakfast table the next morning, Dad looked up from his phone and shook his head in amazement. Your hair looks fantastic. Thanks, Aiden replied. But your shirt is dirty and your shoelaces are untied, his dad said. I'm a grubby kid, Dad. I'm doing the best that I can right now. Gotcha, buddy, Dad said. Then Aiden Allen and his hair headed to school, a little less grubby and a little more confident.